Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 20th of October. India hits out at Canada over interference after Ottawa withdraws 41 diplomats. New Delhi, this is China's BRI, says it lacks respect for India's sovereignty. And Bangladesh PM labels main opposition party BNP as terrorist organization. And now for all the details. India on Friday hit out at Canada after its Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie issued a statement on the withdrawal of 41 diplomats from the country. India's Foreign Ministry said New Delhi has been engaged with the Canadian side over this since last month in order to work out the details and modalities of its implementation and that no international norm was violated as it sought parity in the mutual diplomatic presence. Canada has announced it will stop the in-person visa services in all three of its consulates while the overall visa processing time will increase. New Delhi and Ottawa have been at increasingly bitter odds since the assertion last month by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that Indian government agents had played a role in the murder of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijjar in June. However, India has rejected the claims, calling them absurd. Notably, Canada has yet to provide any public evidence to support the claims about Niger's killing. Moving on, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday inaugurated India's first semi-high-speed regional rail service, which has been named as Namo Bharat. The train will connect the Sahibabad and Duhai depot stations. The 17-kilometer priority section of the delhi ghazibad Meerut RRTS corridor is set to be open for passengers on Saturday. This marks the introduction of the regional rapid transit system in India. The complete 82.15-kilometer Delhi to Meerut rail service is expected to be operational by June 2025. And as Pakistan and China renewed their pledge to strengthen cooperation over the CPEC, the flagship project of Beijing's ambitious Belt and Road Initiative, India on Thursday once again voiced its concerns. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakchi said China's BRI lacks the respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity of India. New Delhi has reservations about the project as several segments of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor pass through the regions under the illegal occupation of Pakistan, which Bakchi said violates Indian sovereignty. I don't think we received the invitation this year. However, on our position on the BRI, including its lack of respect for our sovereignty and uh, territorial integrity, are well known and consistent. I would refer you to our statements earlier, particularly the statement I think we made in May 2017, articulated I think the first time the BRI forum was being held, and I, I think those concerns uh, stand uh, even today. Meanwhile, the Taliban ruled Afghanistan has also expressed interest to join the Belt and Road Initiative. In an interview with Reuters, Acting Commerce Minister Haji Nuruddin Azizi highlighted the wealth of coveted mineral resources which Afghanistan could offer to China and said Afghanistan is now more than ever ready for investment. Beijing has sought to develop its ties with the Taliban-run government since it took over in 2021, even though no other foreign government has recognized the administration. The IMF mission chief Peter Breuer said on Friday that they are looking for a strong budget and narrower deficit from Sri Lanka as the island nation is seeking funding to bridge the gap between government revenue and expenditure. The IMF official said the objective is not to let a shortfall happen next year and ensure revenue exceeding 12% of GDP. Sri Lanka plunged into its worst financial crisis last year, but since locking down a $2.9 billion IMF program in March, it has managed to partly stabilize its economy, reducing inflation and rebuilding reserves. However, the country has struggled to increase public revenue, with the IMF projecting a 15% shortfall this year. Sri Lanka reached a staff-level agreement with the IMF on late Thursday to release a second tranche of about $330 million, but still needs approval from the IMF executive board.
Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Thursday labeled the main opposition party BNP as terrorist party which only kills people. They every day want resignation and to topple the government through movement, Hasina was quoted as saying by news agency UNB. She said the government has no objection to movement by BNP but arson violence causing harm to people cannot be allowed in the country. She added BNP cannot be called an opposition party as they have no representation in a democratic system. The comments come ahead of the general election scheduled for early 2024. The BNP has been calling for PM Hasina to step down and for the next election to be held under a neutral caretaker government. However, the opposition itself is in disarray since the conviction of party supremo and former Prime Minister Khalid Zia in a corruption case. A delegation of senior monks from the Central Monastic Body of Bhutan is on a visit to India this week. The delegation arrived in Delhi on October 15 and is now in Ladakh for a six-day visit to several monasteries. Communities in Ladakh and Bhutan are united by common ideologies, beliefs and social cultural traditions characteristic of the practices enshrined in the Drupka Kagyu sect of Buddhism. Monasteries in Ladakh are revered in Bhutan as seats of spiritual learning and vice versa. This high-level visit is expected to provide fresh impetus to traditional linkages and strengthen age-old connections. As the celebrations of Durga Puja festival have begun, elaborate marquees across India are also spreading awareness about social issues. Take a look. In a bid to spread social awareness among people while celebrating the grand Durga Puja festival, organizing committees have put up pandals or marquees of different themes across India's Kolkata city. One such pandal in the Kashi Bose Lane area is spreading awareness about child labor and trafficking. The artists have poured their hearts and souls into creating idols and scenes that celebrate the victory of good over evil while illustrating stories of child trafficking. Red or black. So red or black symbolizes the darkness, the pathway to darkness basically. जो बच्चे लोगों को बोला जाता है कि आप लोगों को हम लोग देंगे एक बहुत अच्छा लाइफ पर उन लोगों को दिया जाता है क्या ना darkness से भरा हुआ एक लाइफ तो वो डोरवे दिखा गया है. Second step में आप जो पाएंगे तो एक दिखेगा आपको rotating table. So rotating table is symbolizing the auction. Meanwhile, traditional drummers, dhakis who are an intrinsic part of the Durga Puja celebrations, have arrived in major cities across West Bengal. Some of the organizing committees locally also organize contests and cash awards are given to the best drummers. 8,000, 7,000, 7,000, have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.